Hey, it's Steven here from Marketplace Superheroes, and in this video, I'm gonna really answer the question, is it possible to make $10,000, pounds, euro, whatever currency you're in, per month in net profit, selling simple products on Amazon? Let's get into it. Now, before I dive into the question, as always, I ask you to do a couple of things. Number one, please like this video. It really helps us get in front of more people and share the message. The second thing as well I'd love for you to do today is just subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And if you are, please let one person know about the channel. That said, let me just answer the question very early today. Um, when I answer the question, I'm then gonna break down the road to getting to $10,000, because obviously that's a question that you have. The question is not, is it possible or not? It's just, what does it involve? And it's a very simple level. It involves selling simple products on Amazon in as many markets as possible, making a small amount of profit, and doing that over and over again every single day. And every time Amazon opens a new market, it's involved, it really involves selling there. Now, I wanna get my calculator out first because what helped me years ago when I first started working with Robert as my first mentor was he would tell me, break down the numbers, Stephen. Don't just tell me you wanna do X or Y, break down the road to getting there. So let's say it's 10,000, right? I'm gonna click in here and we've 10,000. We divide that down by what? By 30, 30 days in a month, right? I guess it's the $333 per day in net profit. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide that number by two. Why am I dividing that number by two? It's because I'm not just going to sell in say, just in North America, in .com. I'd like to sell in, in, in Europe, over here, sorry, and the US over here. And when I do that, I can sell in more markets at the same time, because the US is one market and Europe's actually five, gonna be soon six, seven markets, right? So we're getting into six markets and beyond rather than just one country. And it stands to reason, the more markets you sell in, the faster you're gonna sell out, and therefore the faster you're gonna get to your net profit every single month. So we're at 166 per continent now. Now let's imagine we're making $4 a sale. That gets us to, I'm just gonna say 40 per day, 40 sales, because you know, if I do 41.6, it's gonna be a nightmare. So we're at 40 sales per day. Now let's say that, you know, you go through our programs, you find five different products, five, and you can sell so many more than five. Let's just say five. That gets us to eight sales per day in each continent. Now a continent like Europe, for example, is like five, six plus markets. So as you can see, you divide that down, it's so realistic to get to that number. US is obviously a big country, a lot of people buying stuff there. So it's so realistic to get to that number as well. So as I said, you know, it really is not a question of, is it possible? It's more a question of what does it involve? So that's really breaking it down when you're looking at net profits and things like that. All right, so that's part one. We've broken down the numbers, we know what's possible. So the next thing is I wanna give you a set of rules that some of you will know because you're Marketplace Superheroes members, but rules I do not want you ever to break. And promise me you, don't, you won't break them because either the rules are gonna keep you very safe when you're selling on Amazon. And what do we mean by that? Well, you've got to make sure you're selling a product that's in demand, number one, proven demand, people are actually buying it right now. And also, you're not getting into a market where there's so many competitors, it's going to be so hard to compete. So what are the numbers that are going to keep us safe on Amazon? Well, we've got a couple. The first one is we have to look at the BSR of a product, the best seller rank. And that's going to give us a feel for how well that item is selling on Amazon. Very simple. So I'll take an example. I will look at an emergency toilet seat because I always laugh whenever I think of this one, but it's actually a really good product, a really important product. It's actually one that's somewhat interesting as well for, for those of you watching this. So let's look at it, right? 462 results for that keyword. Now that's the first number I wanna talk about. It's the search results for the generic keyword, right? So what does that mean? Well, that means there's 462 different products that contain the word emergency toilet seat, as in emergency is in there somewhere, toilet seat. And they may not contain all the words, it'll contain some of them. So you wouldn't say there's 462 emergency toilet seats, different brands been sold on Amazon. You're saying that this key phrase is used in that many listings. Because let me prove that to you right now. So let's just search the word emergency. And even here you can see Amazon are suggesting different keywords that we would, maybe they're saying, are you looking for emergency food, radio? What are you looking for exactly? All right, so really quickly, I'm gonna ask you a question. I would really appreciate it if you put this into the comments right now. And don't worry, no one's gonna judge you. It's not gonna be weird. It's just gonna be interesting. How much do you want to make in net profit with your Amazon business? I hope you do the exercise that we've just shown you, 
but please let me know how much do you want to make put it down to the comments let us know and I will respond to you and I'll give you a little bit of a go for it or I'll give you some advice whatever I can do I'd love to hear back from you because it's always interesting to me so put in how much you want to make in that profit in the comments right now and like the video on the way down there so let's search that and we can see this number change to over a hundred thousand so my point is proven Let's just go emergency toilet, 1,000. So it's coming down. And the last one then is seat. So again, 462. Now, the interesting thing is whenever we searched emergency toilet, it gave us lots of other ideas. So even toilet kit, 447, that's still an interesting product, right? So that's another potential idea we've looked at. So that's the first number, uh, it's the generic search results. The second number is the BSR, like I talked about a second ago. We want that to be less than 30,000 in the US, right? Uh, so let's let's see if that's the case. So uh, we'll look around and we'll see what we're talking about. So this one's 13,7314. So this one is doing really well. I mean, really well. It's a, it's a Lugable Lou portable five gallon toilet. I know it's kind of disgusting, but hey, I'm, I'm not above selling these products. I hope you aren't either. So the key number then, as I just said, was that 7356. That's much less than 30,000. So that's something that is interesting. And really, when you look at this listing of this product, it's, it's very, very cool because the, the title here could be a lot better. They could have more different keywords in here. Now it's not bad, but it could be better. These, these bullet points are okay. But again, they could be better. They could describe the product in more detail. It could be much more uh, descriptive than they are. Also, there's only one image of this product and it's not even one I can scroll in, I can uh, zoom in on. So the image quality is very poor. There should be more images. Uh, down here as well, the description is pretty much non-existent. So that like a product like this, honestly, we could compete with this and we could definitely do well. Now also you can do things like, well, what if people would buy more than one of this product? Can we do a two pack? That's a potential. What if we were to give them more, um, you know, a toilet roll with this product, right? Is that something we could look at doing? So what does that mean? Well, we're improving the offer. And if you know anything about watching this channel, we want to improve the offer. So that's the second number. We've got the, 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 uh, the search terms, search results, number one, with the BSR, number two. They're two really important numbers I want you to really monitor. The next one I want, want you to monitor is the price point, okay? I want you selling products that are well over seven dollars sales price the reason is this if you sell something for seven dollars there's lots of different costs go into selling a product on amazon you got to import the thing you got to then get it over across to amazon then amazon have fees then there's commissions on amazon and i don't want you to be in a situation where you're tight on your margin so i would suggest looking at products that are you know twenty dollars and above i'm not saying that's a mandatory thing i'm just saying it's something you really should consider because you know you're gonna have more margin in a product like that that's not a guarantee by the way it's just an assumption but it's a pretty good one so they're the numbers that i i really think you should stick around especially when you're just starting out with that said i'm going to give you some more rules now to consider that are very important all right so product rule number one do not sell trendy products, overly trendy products. It's a huge mistake I want you to keep away from. Why is that? Well, again, we've, we looked at it in a previous video recently. If you're selling like a fidget spinner, you're in a bad place because it's gonna go up and then it's gonna go down and it's not gonna be a good thing for you long term. Also, don't sell products that are powered, that they're electrical in some way. Why? Because they break. Also in the US and the UK and actually, um, and, and in continental Europe, those three different places, there's actually different plugs for each of those different countries and the, each of those different land masses as well. So you're gonna be in a situation, if you sold an item into .com, which needed to be plugged in, well then if you sell that in the UK, you need a different plug. You can't send the same unit over. In Europe, different plug again. That's a bit of a nightmare. Also, there's a fault rate and there's a return rate because of their the fact they're just electronics, it's just the way it is, right? The next thing I want to consider is don't sell products that are breakable, that, that are like porcelain, glass, things like that. That is just a recipe for difficulty. The next rule I wanna give you is don't sell products that come into contact with food, they're ingested, they're put on the skin or anything like that. Why? Because they're gonna need different certifications. There's lots of different issues like this. I see people come up with, you know, the FDA, I need the FDA compliance in the US. 
And that's just not something you want to be in. So you want to sell just simple, simple items. Now you might say, well, if I sit on an emergency toilet seat, well, it does come into contact with the skin, but it's different. I'm not applying it onto the skin or anything like that. So you shouldn't have an issue with a product like that. But it's something you always want to be searching. And also you want to check out Amazon have different criteria for products they accept, don't accept. And that's something you want to be looking at. You can literally just Google Amazon prohibited products and keep an eye out for those. Finally, products that are oddly shaped, you want to avoid. Tricky shapes are going to be hard to ship and also products that are sharp if anything and, and, and finally finally actually products that are hazardous flammable we used to sell the Chinese lanterns years ago and they had a fuel cell in them and it was something that you know it worked for a while and then you know we, we just didn't know at the time we didn't think about it well this fuel cell you can't air freight that if you ship that over from the UK to Germany via the air as it would be because it has to get over quickly you can't ship it because it's flammable. So it was a big problem and we had to stop selling it. Also, it's not great for the environment, which is <laughs> something we, we keep away from. So there's things like that. The hazardous thing as well, you know, we used to sell these dehumidifier products years ago and we thought they were fine. They, they seemed completely cool. And then, we, and then, you know, we sold them for a while and Amazon said, this looks hazardous. And we looked at it and we realized, oh God, it actually is hazardous. So again, had to stop selling it. These are all mistakes you can avoid easily. Rules that if you just don't break them, you're gonna be absolutely fine. So that's phase two, part two of this video done. Let's get on to part number three now. Okay, so now we're on to the next part, part three. I wanna give you some different hacks that are gonna make things easier. Now, I don't always talk about hacks being a great thing, but in this case, I think these will really help you get to that 10K and beyond and make sure that you solidify that 10K net profit rather than get there and then lose an item because it doesn't work anymore, or there's issues with it or whatever. So let's look at them. The word accessories is a beautiful word within Amazon, right? And so what do I mean by that? Well, let's just say again, we, we are, we're looking at a market and we're thinking, well, fishing, right? A friend of mine sells, sells a lot of fishing products. And let's say you go fishing accessories, right? Well, this is a huge market, but what has this done? It's really brought us down a line of thinking. We've gone to accessories. Like I showed a drawing accessories in another video and we found potential products from there. But also this is a really nice thing over here on the left hand side. When we're telling Amazon what we're looking for, then they're like, well, what about these categories? Is there other things in here that, you, that you're looking for that are important? Also, these are items that people are actually looking for all the time. That's why they turn them into categories and subcategories. That's something that's important to think about as well. So we're always selling an accessory, typically. And I'm not saying it's a rule, I'm just saying that's typically what you're looking for. It's gonna be a little bit of a hack. Uh, marine dry bags, right? Let's just look at that. See the way that just keeps coming down? We went from 80,000, now we're down to 979, just because we're getting more specific within Amazon. But the word accessory really helped us get here a lot more quickly. So it's a really beautiful word. Uh, if you get stuck in your, when you're researching, you can just put in the word accessories and you can start going down the line and you're gonna start finding different things from going down that line, right? So as you can see, these dry bags are just really popular. We wouldn't sell them because it just looks like they're way too uh, popular. Uh, but again, like we might look at a waterproof pouch and you know maybe, maybe that's interesting, but I could almost guarantee you uh, waterproof. So yeah, it's just, it's, I knew it was gonna to be too competitive, so it is. But, but the point is not so much, uh, you know, well, sell those kinds of products. It's more just use the word accessories and you'll start going down a more interesting line. Because even things like this, you know, that has nothing to do with what I was looking for, but all of a sudden these different products start coming up the more I go down this line. But if you start getting into like more and more uh, niche things and you start using the word accessories, you'll start to find, well, I don't wanna actually sell the main item. I'm looking to sell the accessories to the main item. And we've shown loads of examples before on the channel like that. Like, you know, remember the uh, the Carboy Cleaner? Uh, why this was interesting was 207 results, way less than a thousand as we know. But what was interesting about this is this is a cleaning product for a Carboy. It's an accessory. So the point here is accessories are great. Accessories Accessories are things you're gonna typically be selling and you wouldn't always sell the main item, but you would sell the accessories. That's a quick hack, something to consider, something to also think about as you're researching. Okay, next one, avoid selling the main item. I just said that a minute ago and I'm just gonna restate that. Uh, it doesn't always mean you never sell the main item, but like for example, the carboy or like, let's just say we had like a brewing kit. Well, you know, the carboy cleaner, let's just say there was it was a brewing cleaner. That would sometimes be better than selling the brewing kit because if we went brewing kit and it was like, I have no idea what the result's gonna be. I'd say it'll be big. So it's over a thousand. So I mean, it doesn't look too bad, but when you go down, it's, you start getting into that confused market we've talked about. What would you 
you sell? Why would you sell it? Point is, what relates to brewing that's an accessory to that that we could sell? That's the kind of thinking I want you to have going forward. It's gonna help you get to where you wanna be. So that's the second little hack. Uh, next hack, try researching hobbies plus accessories, like I mentioned. So uh, we've done this in a video before, uh, but again, you can, you can watch that video. Just a really quick thing to do is go to Wikipedia and you're gonna see a whole bunch of different, uh, you know, different hobbies that you can look at from drawing, drink mixing, etc. And you can literally take one of these, uh, multiple of these, and put them into Amazon and start to find potentially interesting items. Now, obviously some of these, like if you go baking accessories, there's gonna be, tons but the more strange products you know could be really cool like for example metalworking and i have no idea what's going to happen here as this is just quick fire hacks but we'll just take a quick look at metalworking hack <laughs> hacks okay no accessories brain going okay so forty thousand. so look Point you know, is not proven, but then you look over on the left-hand side and, you, and they're starting to give you a lot of different options. So again, power lathe accessories. So if we click that, that would bring us down to 177. Again, I would not say we would sell any of these. The point is though, you or me, we would never have considered even, like this one here, this is an interesting one. It's the Anytime Tools, five center drill, countersink. Like again, not something to sell, but I would not have thought about, you know, this type of thing ever by just thinking about it. We have to have methods of finding products. These hacks get us there. Are you on Instagram? If you're on Instagram, what I'd love you to do is give me a follow. All you gotta do right now is maybe take out your phone if you're on your computer. Uh, if you're watching this on your phone, maybe just check this out later. Go to Instagram, sign in, and then go up and type in Stephen J. Summers. You should see this on the screen right now. Stephen J. Summers, that's my handle. I want you to give me a follow, and then what I want you to do is send me a message on Instagram. DM me, let me know how you're getting on. Why, if you got any questions, and I'd love to respond to you. So jump over there right now, give me a follow and I'll chat you in there. Let's keep looking quick fire. Make sure we're using the correct keywords as well. So, you know, we looked at that with the emergency toilet seat. If you just had emergency toilet, that's not the actual keyword that you're looking for. And sometimes you could have it that it's too short tail. Emergency was over 100,000. We added in toilet seat, it started to come down. Therefore, make sure you're using the right keywords. That's gonna be another way to get yourself to 10 grand and beyond by just making sure you've done that. And the final one, work with three suppliers per product. I always recommend that. You go to Alibaba, don't just find the first supplier, work with more than one. And the final one here is keep your packaging simple to start. A lot of people out there think they have to have their packaging amazing to get to 10 grand per month in net profit. You really don't. Keep it very simple uh, because the more complicated it gets, the harder it is to get it into multiple countries. I suggest keeping it simple. You can always scale it up later on. So there's some quick fire hacks. We'll move to the last piece now to get you to that 10K and beyond per month. Okay, so the final piece, again, I'm gonna go to my, go to my dock and finish this off is, uh, you know, when we're getting to 10K per month, how do we finance it? How much is it gonna cost us, etc.? So the first rule I'm gonna give you today is that each product that you're looking at should have a budget of one to three thousand dollars to start that's a simple rule that you've been thinking about uh, therefore if you have five products like over a period of time to launch that that amount it's gonna be anywhere from you know at a lower level uh, five thousand to a higher level fifteen thousand to launch that many different uh, products uh, but you know typically you're not gonna have to you're not gonna have to put that out in one go you're gonna slowly move up to that sometimes I've seen people launch a product for 800 bucks but really like you know, to do everything, ship it in, it's gonna be about $1,000. That's something you wanna consider as well. So stage it up. Now the second thing that's really important here is you're looking to reduce your flip time. So so you're investing money, one to three grand on a product, and then to flip that faster, so that one to three grand, you wanna double that. You wanna turn one into two, three into six or more, right, depending on the profitability. You wanna do that in the shortest time possible. How do we do that? We sell in more countries, we make more sales, we sell out more quickly. When you're back in China then as well, something you wanna do, we can help you do that with Superhero Freight. Split your order in two, send 60% to the US, 40% to Europe, and then you're gonna sell out your products a lot more quickly. That's a really important thing as well. And then I think the final piece here, which really wraps up this entire piece is, your goal is to eventually use other people's money to grow your business. How does that look? You put your one to three K into your products, you get them selling, you start moving and moving, you're making money now, and you will not always use your own capital. 
when you're making money, especially you get the 10K per month in net profit, you're gonna be able to go to a bank or any financial institution and say, hey, look where my products are, they're working now. I want you now to fund the winning items so I can take my money and I can try new products. And that is how you will scale beyond the 10K per month in net profit and grow something a lot bigger. You're taking a proven thing, it's not unproven, get a bank to, to put money into that, keep it in stock, and then you move on. And that's really the real secret, use other people's money to scale and you'll go much beyond 10K per month in net profit. That's it for today's video. I know we had a lot of different parts today. I mean, we started by answering the question, but then we gave you rules, we gave you things to think about. We talked about the long term of using other people's money. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I wanted to try something a bit different today. Also make sure that you give us the little comments and you do like this video. And also please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help us get the word out to more people. And if you're not part of Marketplace Superheroes, make sure you get yourself over to uh, the link in the description or in the first comment. Just go back to our website. We'll give you some free training. You can see what it's all about. See if you want to get involved in building your own Amazon business. And then hopefully we'll see inside the training where we can really give you the support that you need to build this business full time. With that said, I hope you come to another video and enjoy it. I've really enjoyed making today's video and I'll see you in the next one.